focusing on the innovation. Uh, and innovation is very close to our hearts uh, because of this, that uh, we have noticed that there is a lot of potential uh, in uh, closing the special gap, which is affecting um, the life of so many people uh, living on the daily basis, some limitations. And this is the reason why uh, one uh, of the priorities of the ITU uh, has been dedicated towards the uh, ICT accessibility, uh, which uh, where we are working together with the countries on creating enabling environments uh, for fostering and uh, ICT accessibility at the global level uh, and making sure that by the 2023, uh, all the countries are well equipped in the um, with the policy measures and instruments to advance the ICT accessibility. There is no um, doubt, in fact, on these facts, uh, if the digital solutions uh, can change the world, and they can. Uh, we are having uh, almost 1 billion people uh, with disabilities, uh, and all of us, so we are users of the ICTs, but not all of us, we can, in fact, uh, use them uh, because of some um, some particular limitations, and this is something what motivates us and to see how to make sure that those innovations are coming uh, to those who are in the need. Uh, we have prepared uh, quite exciting uh, program with uh, a few examples of those who are leading the innovation. Uh, who are uh, bringing the research uh, from the laboratory into the uh, real implementation um, and um, um, into, into the hands of those who need those solutions. Um, this work is done under the Regional Initiative for Europe, where when member states uh, of the European region, consisting of 46 countries, uh, have agreed uh, to uh, make sure that accessibility is on the top of our agendas, but um, in the same time, underlined that uh, we need to make significant progress on building the ecosystem, uh, where to approach uh, these challenges in the systemic way and not ad hoc way, uh, what very often is uh, happening. Uh, so this is the reason why uh, with so many partners, uh, we have um, put uh, together the initiative called uh, Accessible Europe. And hand in hand with the European Commission, uh, we are um, continuing and navigating the policy discussion, uh, but also the practical implementation of the policies on the ground, making sure that the policies uh, are not only just uh, the referential documents, uh, but they mean something for uh, the persons with the disabilities. Uh, in this, um, on this occasion, please let me also extend our invitation uh, to the upcoming event of the Accessible Europe, which will be happening already in uh, uh, six weeks time. Uh, so please book in your agenda 23, 25th of March. Uh, and uh, this event is held uh, in cooperation with the European Commission, but also uh, with the strong support of the Portuguese uh, presidency in the EU Council, what makes this event very specific because the outcomes will feed into the policy discussions on the digital pro uh, transformation priorities of the European Union. Next, uh, please. Um, in, uh, in this sense, also under uh, the Accessible Europe, one of the streams is focusing uh, strongly on the fostering of the ICT centric innovation ecosystem for Accessible Europe. And uh, this is the reason why also this year we have benefited from uh, over 95, uh, 97 submissions uh, of those who are leading the projects, uh, who are uh, bringing the concrete examples of the solutions impacting the human lives. Uh, and uh, we hope that we'll be able to present you and um, uh, winners, but also those uh, who are exceptionally good in this area uh, at, on the occasion of the Accessible Europe happening on the 23, 25th uh, of March. But not to prolong, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this uh, event. Um, next slide, please. Uh, we um, 
are um, uh, we are with this event uh, we want uh, to not only to present you uh, the, the solutions but also draw attention to the important um, uh, challenges related to the fostering uh, and advancing innovation uh, in the ICT accessibility uh, starting from the funding going through visibility uh, market access um, ecosystem and challenges uh, and the know-how which is necessary in order to drive this uh, innovation. There's a lot of potential of bringing together those old innovators. And I think this is one of the example uh, where uh, the, we see always such a nice reaction and smile uh, on the faces of the um, all stakeholders being interested uh, in joining, displaying their innovation and seeking the synergies between their and uh, their actions. Next slide, please. So in this context, uh, we, uh, we are encouraging um, uh, all of you uh, to great collaboration uh, at regional level, uh, but also uh, being uh, reaching out to, to the policymakers and not um, being uh, convinced that there are the barriers between the innovators and the other stakeholders, but trying to jointly to break those barriers and create some opportunities. Uh, one important item uh, is the standardization as well, uh, and uh, the use standards, because this ensures scalability of the solutions. Uh, and this is something very um, uh, much often uh, drawn um, as the and draw, attention is drawn as the one of the uh, very important um, components uh, for those who are designing uh, the solutions uh, that they can think already from the beginning about uh, their future of the solution and to become this caliber uh, the international standards regional standards are those who have to be uh, embedded in the design and uh, we are encouraging all of you uh, to join the work streams of the ITU uh, and all those uh, bodies which are working with us. So, ladies and gentlemen, next slide. Um, with this, um, with this, I will uh, hand over to my colleague uh, Rati, uh, who will be moderating the next part of this uh, session and the presentation and pitching of the different solutions. Rati, I'm handing over to you. Thank you, Yaroslav, for your kind introduction. Um, so, colleague, before we proceed, we just uh, get feedback to make the PPT uh, smaller and also the interpreters uh, bigger. So we will try to make this happen. Um, and let me try to share my screen. So hopefully this is working well. So uh, just to let you know before uh, beforehand, I'm sorry, I need to go back a few slides. To so just let you know for uh, the uh, for the participants like to view a live cap a live captioning is also provided here. So you can uh, go to this link and also sign in using this account. And I believe my colleague Marshall already also shared this. Uh, instruction directly on the chat on the broadcasting web page. So uh, without further ado, I will start. Let me try to make it smaller. Yeah. We just need to quit the, quit the uh, full screen, I believe. I'm sorry for this technical. We are all learning here. Okay. Yeah. So for I would like to invite our first presenter. It's Mr. Christoph Jomuller. He is the executive vice president of uh, assistive mouse adapter, Amaneo. So uh, for Christoph Jomuller, uh, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to show our innovative device called Amaneo, the assistive mouse adapter, which compensates hand tremor. 
CSS is a manufacturer in Germany dedicated to assistive technology. And this is one of our uh, innovative products uh, within the last few years. Next slide, please. Uh, what we see is that uh, there's a, a challenge which is, which is a little bit hidden, the hand tremor. Uh, a lot of people, millions of people are suffering from a severe hand tremor and are not able to control a computer in an in a efficient way. So the, the tremor, the hand tremor in, can influence the use of uh, ICT, that means uh, if you have a, a shaking hand, whatever reason, uh, it can be really a, a big problem. Um, you are not able to use modern communication and uh, IT technology. Uh, what we saw that this is really underrated in the assistive technology world and um, can lead to job loss or loss of, of uh, communication opportunities. Um, I would show you a, would tell you a long story, but I will do the short version because I have only five minutes or so. <laughs> so uh, the, the challenges are that the main reasons for this uh, hand tremor challenges are Parkinson's or essential tremor, for example, for, uh, for elderly people, but uh, Parkinson's is also for people in, in the 40s. So the, the real challenge is uh, to move a mouse, not, not to move the mouse, but on the screen it is jumping around. So you have no chance to control your, your mouse in a, in a good way. So you are not able to control a computer. The other thing is the mouse click. A lot of people having a severe hand tremor are doing a lot of clicks, but they want not to do this click. And another challenge is the, the touch screen. If you have a shaking hand or a severe hand tremor, you are not able to, to use a touch screen. So these are the, the challenges. And we, we had a few customers asking us for, please give us a solution for, for this problem. How can we solve this problem? And it should be a very simple and easy to install and to use a solution. Next slide, please. Well, that's the reason why we developed Amaneo, and this is the solution. This is just a small box, and that is an assistive mouse adapter. Uh, easy to use, that means it is as a hardware adapter, no software required. You can just plug it in between uh, your mouse and the PC. And there are two versions available, Amaneo USB for any PC or Mac. Uh, Every device you can use a standard USB mouse. And there's another solution, Amaneo PTI for iPad and iPhone. Um, the, and then there's a USB port where you can connect uh, any mouse. So it, it's really easy to use. Just a small box that can solve a big problem. Next slide, please. We have uh, important features, a tremor filter, will, which can be is adjustable in 10 steps, depending on, on the, uh, the hardness of the, the tremor. Um, the fil it filters the trembling of the hand. And now the mouse mo uh, pointer moves uh, very smoothly on the screen. So this is, solves the problem of the shaking hand. Really easy. Next slide, please. Um, then you have the, the mouse click, which is also a problem. And therefore, it's a built-in click delay, also adjustable in 10 steps. And this avoids unintentional clicking. So you are really clicking on the right icon you want to, uh, you want to have. If you are not able to click, you can connect external switches for the, for the mouse buttons. Um, that makes it easy because as soon as you connect them, the internal uh, mouse buttons are deactivated. So you really have a solution for all problems you have if you have a severe hand tremor. Next slide, please. If you have a touch screen, especially an iPad or iPhone, you can use the um, Neo BTI and you can use uh, any mouse to control an iPad and iPhone 
and you have no unintentional touch activation because you normally are chopping around with your finger. You're not really sure that you are clicking on the right device. Uh, this is uh, because there's also this tremor compensation built in. Um, that makes it possible that you can really control any uh, iPad or iPhone or other tablet, uh, even if you're, you have a, a hand tremor. Uh, in, in this uh, case, it is connected by a, a Bluetooth connection. Uh, Amaneo USB is connected to the standard USB port. Yes, that's a, that's a short uh, story of the long story about Amaneo and Amaneo BTI. Um, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Gustav. And as we have limited time, as he mentioned, we will need to keep moving to another presenter. So we will have here Ruth from Moving Mood. So for Ruth Turo, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure being here. Well, I'm not gonna delay, let's start. Um, do you mind next slide, please? We are a moving mood, moving for a, mo a good mood. We are a social company specialized on fashion and diversity. Since 2011, we create inclusion, designing accessibility of products, services, focuses for the fashion company, the apparel and universities. Next slide, please. So basically what uh, we do, it came from the fashion industry. It's to improve the autonomy of people with dependency and how we do it. Uh, we have four hours of work. First, it's always the research, research the needs, what people need and how we can solve it. So we develop a program for the fashion companies, how they can include uh, accessibility into the garments because fashion is for everyone. We all get dressed and undressed, so how to make it easy. This went to universities and clusters doing, a, a, we are finishing right now an online course on inclusive fashion because we need to teach also designers how to add inclusive, um, the inclusivity in the fashion design. And then in the industry, moving a stick, then it's the project we are gonna see right now. And next uh, slide, please. So our project is the sewing machine adaptation for people with uh, physical disabilities. Next slide, please. Maybe I did too many slides. <laughs> so which, which challenge we, we face? 60% uh, of uh, people with disability are unemployed just in the European Union alone with a high cost to governments in pensions and subsidies. The main cause is the lack of adaptations to jobs. And also we have to consider that fashion employs one of six people worldwide. So it's a huge market to create employability. Next slide, please. So you can see here our solution is any adaptations for the sewing machines. Basically it replaces the use of your feet by levers activate with your arms. It's made with 3D printed technology that means it's affordable, accessible, and easy to produce all over the world. As I mentioned, the fashion employs one of six people worldwide. So it's a great uh, sector to create employability. And now after the COVID and all the lockdowns, then every country discovered we need to be more autosufficient. Auto yeah, so that's why we really believe we are gonna grow. Next slide, please. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, yes, the benefits that it's uh, open, accessible, detachable. You don't need to leave the machines adapted uh, all the time. Uh, next slide, please. So it goes to market through through key players. Yes. Uh, oh, sorry. I, I got to uh, educate, yeah, it's uh, the first step, practice and work like any other profession. So there are uh, 14 million people suffering from lack of food problems just in the 
European Union. There are several designs and tailoring centers to learn. And we have an important apparel industry where it can be applied. Even if after COVID, uh, different companies are uh, closing down, but still there is a, a huge opportunity. Next slide, please. So as I said, it goes to market with uh, three key players because we have to educate, we have to learn, practice and work. So education is the first, like any other profession, our first customers, the schools and the special employment centers. And thanks to the internships agreements between school and companies, we begin to introduce to the industry. So we are at the moment on the learning and the special employment centers. Next slide, please. The social and economic value is shared between all the stakeholders, the users, no, the other, the previous, yeah, this one, thank you. The users have a new job opportunity than didn't have before, uh, a higher education opportunity than didn't have before. Educational centers increase the number of students promoting value and equality. The industry also benefits from some taxes and having loyal employees social sector NGOs also benefits uh, to their service, increasing uh, the areas of work. Uh, governments also reduce their cost on, um, on the payments and uh, unemployment rates. And of course, at a real impact uh, to us as, a, as a leaders and growing this project. Next slide, please. So the, as you could see, we started this project in 2018. We got a grant from um, Social Challenge Platform from European Union. So since uh, we launched the product in uh, Thingiverse and this um, 3D printed um, um, platforms, we received a thousand downloads of the product in one week. So it was incredible. Uh, we can see the acceptance and curiosity of the society for this uh, new tool. Currently, we are introducing in Poland with the Java and Imago Foundation. We are actually working uh, through the European Social Fund and they are gonna become the distributors to this tool inside the uh, Poland territory. So, of course, uh, other countries can come and we hope to really put our seed on creating employability inside the fashion industry for uh, people with physical disabilities. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry, next one. I think it says thank you. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you, Ruth, for the nice uh, presentation. Thank you. So, uh, for the next presenter, we have uh, Faye Corning, is the Managing Director of Facility. Uh, so for Faye Corning, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, so good afternoon. My name is Yves Cornu and I'm the Managing Director at Facility, which is, as you will see, a startup with a positive impact. Next slide, please. As you are aware, according to the World Health Organization, 25% of the world's population suffers from vision, motion, or cognitive troubles, which impair their consuming online content. It simply means that you might have the most beautiful website ever. One fourth of your potential audience will have difficulties or little or no access at all to your online content because they cannot read it, understand it, or interact with it. So fixing this issue is both more inclusive and let's not forget it, good for business. Next slide, please. Our web inclusion solution facility was founded in 2018 in Limoges in the Southwest of France and in Tokyo, Japan to tackle this problem. Our solution was co-created in collaboration with worldwide renowned NGOs because we wanted to answer the real needs of real people and not just to uh, concentrate on regulations or uh, uh, rules or norms. So um, prior to the entry into market, the solution was tested and approved by 14,000 users. And we keep on focusing on R&D to, to provide always new adaptations. Currently, we are working on how to help people 
with autism or people with loss of immediate memory, uh, like Alzheimer's disease, for instance, to remain autonomous online. Next slide, please. While keeping your original website absolutely intact, we don't touch the code, we don't modify anything on your website. The only thing facility will do it's that it will customize the way it appears on your screen, which can be a desktop, a small a mobile phone or a tablet, according to your needs. It's really a customization of the appearance of the website without touching the code. Here, for instance, you can have the website without facility and the same website appearing on the user's screen for people with low vision, for instance, with bigger fonts. Next slide, please. Here, you still have the same website, the previous one, <laughs> uh, and the way it will appear for people with light sensitivity. As you can see, the background is darkened so that you can keep on browsing without problem and without this white background just hitting your eyes. Next slide, please. Here you have another example for people with motion troubles. We were speaking earlier of uh, a mouse for people with uh, tremor problems. What we do for people with tremor problems is that we enlarge the click zones because it's always a problem and an issue to click on a specific small zone. So we enlarge the click zone, we space them each from the other one, and we put a blue line around it so that you can see where you have to click. It helps people for instance, with Parkinson's disease. Next slide, please. And this is another example for people with dyslexia. So we know that uh, dyslexia, depending on the countries, it's between 10 and 13% of the population. So what we do is we provide reading helps for people with dyslexia so, they can, so that they can find a new way of being autonomous in their reading experience. We improve the reading experience from 25% to 85%. These are just a few examples because we provide hundreds of different adaptations to really have a custom-made uh, online uh, user experience, let's say. Next slide, please. So already more than half a million people use Facility to help them interact with those websites uh, using our solution. So you can see that we are uh, not only present in Europe, but also worldwide. We have a branch in, in Japan. We are also in the US. So uh, companies uh, like banks, insurance companies, or e-commerce websites use our solution. And the cities of Tokyo, for instance, or New York City in the US use our solution to provide a more inclusive experience to their users. Thanks to Facility, their users can become, again, autonomous and in their browsing. Facility is a global tool working in any language. The world is our market because there are no boundaries and no borders when you want to foster e, uh, inclusion and diversity. Last slide, please. So I just wanted to thank you for your uh, interest in Facility and don't hesitate to contact me for any details. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eve, for the presentation. Um, so we received feedback before about the sign language interpreters get smaller. So I hope now it's fixed and hopefully our uh, attendees can following this in a better experience. So to just reconfirm our uh, message before, you can also, for the attendees that interested, you can view this uh, live captioning, uh, closed live captioning of this event and following this instruction. And it's also on the chat of the broadcast. So I will move to the next uh, innovators of our innovators. So we would, I would like to invite Mr. Stephen Helby, which is, he is the board member of the World Insign EU. For Mr. Stephen Helby, the floor is yours. Uh, one moment. Um, yes, sure. Can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Okay. So I have an um, interpreter from Germany, so you, <laughs> you can relax for now for, the, for me. Um, but so my name is Steffen Helbing. Uh, I am deaf and uh, thank you. I'm glad uh, to make the presentation today. 
And uh, yeah, I want to show you how can we make the world to a better place. So next slide, please. So we created the, um, the company World in Sign and we are, uh, the, the company is leading by deaf and hearing party, uh, he by a deaf and hearing uh, team. We are from France, from Japan, we're in America, a team. And we are creating new technology. We are implementing um, yeah, technology to have a better access and barrier free. So the next slide, please. In the world, we have 70 million deaf people. And in Europe, we have 2 million people roundabout. And in Germany, we have uh, 38,000 deaf people. But the problem is we have all the lack of communication daily in our daily lives. And also we have not that much interpreter. For example, in Germany, for every 100 uh, deaf people, we have one, uh, one interpreter. And the UN Convention of the Rights has to be, uh, it should be there. So we, have, uh, we, we should have the same communication as hearing people. So the next slide, please. So our team has a new product. We have an idea. We want very free for everyone. We have a new technique and um, we have a service for interpreter, a sign language interpreter that deaf people can always and easily use. So we can contact um, hearing people wherever we are and always have the access through inter, uh, to uh, sign language. So this is uh, the great thing about our digitalization and technique at the daily time. So the next slide, please. Maybe you remember uh, Alexander Graham Bell and he was the inventor of the telephone and his family was deaf and also his wife was deaf. So he was, uh, he is a child of deaf adults and he was always thinking about how can I improve the communication for deaf people, for my wife, what can I do? And the interesting thing is that after 100 years, we have the possibility for video, uh, for video uh, telephony and also from a, a child of deaf uh, adults. So this is uh, quite incredible. Next slide, please. This is our new app and um, it's very great because we have uh, in the background an uh, inter uh, interpreter central station where, um, where our written, uh, written interpreter, uh, sign language interpreter, uh, whatever the deaf person needs. For example, if I have a um, doctor's appointment, I can um, plan everything in my app. And also the uh, interpreter station will let me know, okay, is there an appointment? Is there an interpreter there? And uh, all countries in the world can use our app. And the great thing is we can implement it uh, to your uh, system because all, all countries have different systems. Because we deaf people, we need interpreter and it's not only here in Germany, it's worldwide the problem. Next slide, please. So we have this new app. Um, so you just register yourself and then you can use a service. So um, you can choose what you need, what your needs are. For example, do you need a sign language or international sign, whatever you need. So you just register yourself and then you have, uh, can use a service. So hard of hearing people, deaf uh, people, deaf blind people, all people with disabilities can use um, our service and also the other way around. So also the hearing people can uh, uh, send a message by push um, yeah, to the deaf person. Next slide, please. Very important because if you have an, uh, 
you can see three people on the screen, not only the interpreter. What is the problem for now? Because you always see just the interpreter. For example, remember, if you go to the doctor or you're, uh, you're sitting at home and you, you, um, yeah, you, you call the doctor, you want to see his mimics, you want to see his face, how he acts. So this is very, very good. And I can also use um, the app when I'm at the doctor directly. And, and, and so I just um, put my phone there. And I always have support of the uh, interpreter station that I can make appointments. I have my timetable. I, I'm empowered. I can do everything by my own. And also, if I want to make the uh, appointment on a different date, I don't have to write emails. I, I do it on my own, with the, just with the support of the sign language interpreter. Uh, the next slide, please. So we have the uh, interpreter station where the people um, are like, um, they put all the details in, they are also organized. And this is so everything is going smooth and professional and the deaf people uh, shouldn't be scared that anything is wrong or they have a barrier. This is really great that we uh, figured out here. Next slide, please. This is also new. I'm very glad about this. We have, of course, the interpreter station, but we have also an emergency call system because how should a deaf blind person, a deaf people, or also, no, not only the deaf people, every person in the world can use our emergency call system. It's very new and very free. Maybe uh, you know that everyone is uh, uh, working by phone. This app is working not through the phone. It's, uh, so first you give all your name, your data, your, maybe your, uh, what is your sickness and everything, what is uh, regarding your person. And then uh, it's saved. So, um, yeah, next slide, please. <laughs> so what I want to show um, through the app, you can see the five W questions, send the five W questions via protocol. So if you are in an emergency situation, you just push the button, button for example, this button, and then it's sending automatically um, to the police station for example, I can also extend, uh, use this extension. Um, it will send the protocol to the police station, to the firefighters, and they are all informed about everything that I wrote. They know where my directly location is. They know I'm deaf. And also, um, I, I will have an uh, sign language interpreter through my phone because, um, yeah, this is really perfect. So all the stations uh, will get the information where I am, what the problems are, all the W questions. And uh, also I can talk to the sign language interpreter. I don't have to write any SMS, any uh, message uh, via phone. Um, also, uh, I have to say uh, in some situation, it's not possible to do this. But what is important, this emergency call system is for deaf people, but not only for deaf, for all people in the world. And I also have this watch. And for example, if I fell down, um, I, uh, the, uh, the watch is programmed that there will be an automated, um, yeah, an, an automated uh, call to the police and firefighters. And for this, we also have the license. And I don't want that people die because of this. We want to help all people with disabilities, that they are empowered, that they have help. And also, for example, you know that the, uh, um, the, the problem uh, when the ch child is dying and it's not um, breathing anymore. So also th this watch is like, um, yeah, can see this. Yeah, so next slide, please. So here you have the extensions, yeah. So what is also important, what we involve in our app. So you see, it's very, very in an innovation. We have the design protection, for example, uh, if there's something, I need an information and I can't listen to the radio. Maybe you remember in Thailand where those, uh, this bad floating was. Maybe it couldn't, uh, it wouldn't happen if we had like any information, any protection system. And yeah, 
for me, it's important that we have our phones, that also we deaf people know the news and the information before it's happening. We want to see it. We want to know it. Yeah. We want also to uh, to uh, run away when something happening, not only watching, okay, what's, what are the other people doing? The hearing people always have an accent. We want the same. We are all the same. So the next slide, please. And I want like, to let you know, uh, we have a big networking. We are working together for telemedicine to improve our product, to improve our app, to have better access for deaf people. We like develop the new technology and barrier free for everyone. And as to make a connection to what I said, um, we have to, uh, to make the UN Convention of the Rights happen. And I'm really thankful for Alexander Graham Bell because he invented the telephone, but he said, one day we will have also access and see each other on phone. And yeah, we have to improve our techniques. We have to use digitalization and our possibilities that we have, yeah? And sign language is important worldwide. Yeah, thank you for watching me. And uh, yeah, that was my presentation. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Stefan Halbing for this interesting presentation. We get so many facts from this and learn a lot from you. And um, I would like to invite our next presenters. So it's uh, Mr. Claudio Leverance, but before that, let me change the pin to our IS interpreters. So yeah, hopefully it's working right now. Yeah, you can see him in the pin. So for Mr. Claudio, the floor is yours now. All right, hello everyone. Thank you very much for inviting me for today. Um, just for, for clarification, I'm a white male wearing glasses, black hair and a beard sitting in front of a white wall and I'm going to present you today Monevo. Next slide please. So this is Dirk. Um, he's one of our users. Dirk has been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and over the past years he has lost his ability to walk, to be mobile and thus has to depend on a wheelchair. And uh, in the later stages of his disease, um, he will also not be able to control his wheelchair by himself anymore. So he has to rely on special control systems. Next slide. These special control system right now that are available for people just like Dirk are all mechanical. So they have to be built on top of the wheelchair. They are very big, not very handy when you need to change them. And they also obstruct uh, basically your face. So imagine a joystick that I would usually use with your hand. Then this joystick is positioned in front of your chin or your face and you have to push it with your chin or cheeks or lips. Next slide. Just like Dirk, there's more than 400,000 people per year that need a special control. That can be because of multiple sclerosis. So different muscular diseases, um, muscular atrophy, dystrophy, ALS disease, but it can also be due to uh, spinal cord injuries due to accidents. Next slide, please. Because of that, we created Monevo Drive. Next slide. It's uh, first worldwide steering control. Next slide. <laughs> that is based on smart glasses. So uh, on this slide here, you will see a bit about like what you would receive and it combines like the smart glass and adapter. Next slide, please. And the smart glass comes with like different technologies and different features such as speakers, microphone, camera, you'd have a display. And this whole set of features and combination in total is a medical product that is already certified since 2018. Next slide. The way it works is that the glass can connect to a self-developed adapter and this adapter connects to any standard power wheelchair. So within five minutes, we can connect uh, this to, to your wheelchair. 
And by using the movement sensors in the glasses, we can track different head motions and different gestures, which again also can be calibrated and thus lead to a very nice intuitive way to control your wheelchair hands-free. The connection is a secured Bluetooth connection and the device and the solution itself, as it is a medical product, it's 100% reimbursed already in five European countries. Next slide, please. The advantage of the smart glass technology is not only the, the ability to control the wheelchair, but at the same time, we can connect to different other devices, such as robotic arms to enable you drink by yourself again or your smart home in order to control the TV or the lights in your home. Next slide, please. So all in all, there's like several advantages compared to the mechanical solutions. There is the possibility of including different and multiple features. It's also less stigmatizing. So people really can now move out more, go out and be more social again, because beforehand, many users were complaining that they wouldn't really feel comfortable driving around with such a big thing around their faces. Also for the healthcare insurance companies, there are several cost savings over time because we have lesser maintenance costs and even our maintenance can be done remotely. So you don't even need to visit any special local shop that helps you with your wheelchair. Next slide, please. I'm sorry uh, to interrupt you, Claudio. So we just get a message in the chat box that it's okay. able to interrupt our um, presentation for a bit, for two minutes. Um, so uh, the IT team from Zero Project are working on it right now. So they are rebooting the system. So hopefully in two minutes, we can reshare uh, the screen and continue your presentation. All right. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you for the interpreters. You're doing amazing. Okay, since they are trying now, hi, can you hear us clearly?
Michelle, could you tell us if the system working now on the broadcasting? No, it's uh, it's saying to stay tuned. Uh, we're experiencing some difficulties. Okay, thank you for your update. So it's still static there. Uh, it's so uh, it's the live streaming has stopped. Oh, okay, thank you. Then it seems we need to wait for a little bit more. All right, Rati, it's back. Okay, nice. Finally, we go. We are back online now. So, um, Claudio, we are so sorry for this. I will reshare again uh, the presentation where we left before. Sure. So, yeah, we can start now. And uh, uh, okay, Rati, it's gone. Sorry. It's gone. I think it was still static. So they, they, we lost the connection again. The live stream is stopped. Okay. Okay, we just get a message from the Zero Project that we are back online. So, Michelle, can you reconfirm to us and give us a green light to go? So it's saying, I mean, from what I see on the screen, it's saying the Zero Project conference uh, it's coming soon. So we're not live yet, but uh, okay. I will confirm when I see it live. Thank you. Okay, Rati, I think you can go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you for your patience. So we will reshare your presentation. And let's continue from here. Um, just one second, I just need to pin our interpreters. Yes, now, so, yeah, the floor is yours now. All right. Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> I hope you took the, the time to refresh yourselves, be more energized, 
I'm gonna try to like pick up the speed again. Um, again, we're talking about the first wheelchair control system using smart glass technology, a type of smart glass, a glass that you can wear every day um, that allows you to drive your wheelchair hands free, but also enables you to connect to other uh, devices such as your phone, your computer, robots, um, and also your smart home environment. The advantage is again, quick summary is that like you're just wearing a glass, you don't have anything built upon like around your face or in your chin or wherever. So people are less uh, stigmatized and they're able to go out more and, and socialize more. And especially also for healthcare insurances, there's cost savings over time because the glasses don't need such high maintenance as the mechanical alternatives, as well as helps people just to be more active. Thank you, next slide. So this is just like a, a, a quote from, from Dirk, one of our users who's saying like Monevo Drive is something that makes life worth living again. It's just like highlights and summarizes the, the key opinion and the key solution behind, uh, the key uh, characteristic behind the solution. Next slide, please. And I would just want to take some time to highlight also the dream team behind the solution because they are the, the ones that are really like behind the magic, what's happening in the background. We have two software developers, Ashish and Dipesh, both from India, both amazing developers um, who have been working already in different startups or also uh, building solutions for people with disabilities. Konstantin is our hardware engineer. In his free time, he's actually building motorcycles in the garage. So he's the man that is building all the hardware for us. Uh, I myself am um, uh, a recent also like, a, Sorry, I'm also like uh, coming from a project management and consulting background and now responsible for the business development. And we were already excited to be supported by the European Union and also EIT Health. And also of course, our local uh, university, the University of Munich. And uh, right now we're trying to scale this so that everyone can benefit from the solution. Next slide, please. And with that, I would like to invite you all to empower people with us together. So if you know somebody that can benefit from this solution, please reach out to us. Uh, you will find us at www.monevo.com. And if you have questions, please reach out. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Claudio, for your presentation. And since we have 10 minutes extension for our uh, slot together. Let me just change the view. Yeah, so we still have our IS interpreter pin. So um, Marshall is following uh, closely to the broadcasting webpage if we have question or not. If yes, we will uh, have it in the chat. So in the meantime, from ITU, we would like to learn uh, from the innovators, uh, if you could share your experience, what is your main challenges when you're developing uh, such wonderful uh, solutions to improving life for persons with disabilities? So if you could share what are your main challenges and also probably one wish, like my uh, main wish, what you would expect or uh, from a, a from the ecosystem that ITU are tra uh, now trying to build. We want to build um, innovative solutions ecosystem so for supporting such innovators. So if you could uh, share with us in a short sentence, because probably we have five to 10 minutes left, then it would be great. So anyone who would like to start first? Well, I would say the biggest challenge is to educate the market. They are not waiting for us. They, are, they don't know what we are talking about. So it's a big, big challenge to educate the market. All right, thank you, F, for your comments. I'll also jump in quickly. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Ru. No, no, stop. Well, also my wish, to be honest, it will be to finish the pandemic and open the schools because we had the, the project stop since uh, last year because uh, disabled people are also in risk population. So the movements 
are really low, but anyway, we will go with the strengths. So the challenge, I guess that's a worldwide challenge yeah, with the pandemic and a wish uh, as entrepreneur and dealing with so many things. Uh, yeah, I would like maybe better advice in communications and maybe other platforms to link because I saw visually, I can use visually in my website because I have a resource, but maybe it's not good enough. Yes, I, I talk with people with, uh, I don't know, more links, I will say. Yes, sorry. Because I could use many of the solutions or I know people that can use the solutions than today they'll be presented. And for sure there are fashion schools in your countries that can use my solution. So linking, visibility and connecting, I would say. Sorry, thank you, Claudio. No worries. Actually, you need to talk to, to one of my friends. She's a fashion designer and is currently developing something in that area. <laughs> so talk about linking, right? <laughs> Um, thank you very much. So uh, in terms of challenges, uh, one of the biggest challenges that we faced so far and are still facing because it's an ongoing um, uh, activity that we're doing is medical device regulatory. Uh, so all the tests that you need to comply, all the standards that you need to comply, this is something that we haven't had any experience before and we were lucky enough to have great mentors and great experts to support us in this direction. But it took us quite a while to get behind all those regulatory hurdles. Uh, we managed to do so, uh, and there's now new changes happening, so we need to adapt again. Um, but that's one of the challenges. One of the wishes that I have is I think that, um, and that's maybe something that like is already happening, is that like more and more financial support is given to impact areas, more and more, um, Investors are also now looking to, to support people, entrepreneurs, startups with an impact uh, topic behind it. And uh, I wish that this should continue and to grow even more and, and harder because, and, and more and, and bigger, because I think this is one of the challenges we as, as a startup face to always find the necessary resources to again, deal with the challenges around regulatory. So that is my wish that we find more and more people that support the, the good causes behind our uh, journeys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, maybe Christo? Well, uh, my big wish is uh, that the health insurances in all the European countries have more awareness about that this assistive technology is not only a, a cost problem, uh, but also gives a uh, higher quality of life. And that means quality of life uh, means the people are more healthy than before. So the impact of assistive technology is not only the solution for the individual, uh, but it's also a, a tool to give more quality of life and healthiness. That, that's my wish that this awareness is uh, coming uh, up to, to the brains of some of the health insurance managers. Thank you. And maybe from Stefan Halby, if you want to say a few words about this. Yes. So, okay. I, one second. It's important, so, are you speaking the international sign language uh, interpreter? Did you want me to voice? Yes. Okay, sure. What's important I feel is that we are also seen as equal. If we are seen as equal, then we'll have more possibilities. Until now, we've all be, always been seen as less than. So I think, until now, one of the hugest problems is in the communication realm that we need to be seen as an equal and therefore given equal possibilities. And what I do wish for is that for deaf people all over the world, uh, that, that communication barrier can be removed. We have so much to offer. However, it's simply a communication barrier. And if we can remove that communication barrier worldwide, through these devices, 
we can be seen as equals to the hearing community. For all disabilities worldwide, we wanna be seen as equal participants. And if we can remove those barriers, and for the deaf people, it's usually communication barriers, um, it sometimes even becomes a question of life or death. So from everyday communication to emergency services, I would hope that we can see that everyone should have an equal access to make sure that they can save lives. When we look at technology, it's actually something that both communities need. The hearing people also want to talk to the deaf community. It's not only access to the deaf, it's actually access for both the deaf and the hearing people uh, because hearing people don't know sign language. Many people think that sign language or communication devices for the deaf is um, helping the deaf people communicate. But we also need to make sure that it goes on both sides. The other issue I've had is getting a patent. The idea that we had uh, for World in Sign, uh, we had an idea and we had to make sure we patented it because the idea could have been stolen. And not only for Europe, but a patent for, for making sure we use it worldwide. So our goal is to make sure that deaf and hearing people alike worldwide are happy to make sure that they can have communication through our devices. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much for this. So uh, the main points that emerge from here is uh, this ecosystem would be nice if can provide link and network uh, to support the entrepreneurs that we have here. And also uh, the importance in the capacity building uh, components uh, related to regulatory and also in the process of getting patent. So uh, I would like to ask Yaroslav if you would like to um, close with a few words because it seems now our time is off. It's recommended to have break uh, for the zero project session. So yeah, okay. exactly. So dear colleagues, thank you very much. Really, we appreciate very much uh, for joining us and sharing with us not only the information about your innovations, but also your impressions regarding how to foster further uh, the ecosystem, which should uh, be the um, uh, really the space for enabling the further innovation uh, for all entrepreneurs, uh, but also innovators. Uh, of course, uh, we are encouraging all those who are innovating uh, to follow uh, the work stream of the International Telecommunication Union, uh, which I already mentioned, uh, position the accessibility and digital inclusion as one of the top priorities of our union. And this is the reason uh, we are not only meeting uh, to discuss, uh, but we are also developing the capacities um, of the stakeholders we have series of the um, interactions with the policymakers, and these are the interfaces where the entrepreneurs uh, can achieve a lot uh, in addressing their uh, their um, challenges, as we did uh, also during this uh, session. Um, before I close, also I wanted to draw attention of uh, you, but also of the general public uh, to the recent uh, offering uh, provided by the ITU to the countries, but also the uh, different stakeholders, uh, in particular the, uh, the resources which are free. Uh, freely accessible on the web accessibility, uh, on the how to ensure the inclusive digital communication during the crisis and emergency situ situations, uh, and uh, on the ICT accessibility, the key uh, to the inclusive communication. Uh, this is something which uh, really requires special attention of the all stakeholders. Uh, and from our side, we are very much committed uh, to uh, make uh, this proper engagement of all relevant stakeholders, uh, even at the higher level. Uh, and uh, in order to make uh, this uh, as a meaningful engagement, uh, we need to act together. And so that's why thank you very much one more time for spending this time with us, um, those who are presenting, but also those who are passionately following this session at this uh, late hour. And with this, uh, we hope to see all of you at the Accessible Europe taking place on the 23, 24, and 25th of March virtually. 
So please take good note on these dates uh, and we are looking forward uh, to uh, continue our journey with, with joint collaboration on the ICT accessibility. So thank you very much uh, for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you. With this we can close the thank station. You. Bye. Thank you for joining us. Taking us off saying thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice to see you all. Thank you. Thanks a lot. No problem. Thank you.